Good evening and welcome to CB8 Speaks. My name is Sophia James. I'm a member of Manhattan Community Board 8, which covers the Upper East Side from 59th Street to 96th Street and Roosevelt Island. Our guest this month will offer personal perspective as a Community Board 8 member. We will learn what inspired her participation and what she enjoys most about participating on Community Board 8. Lorraine Brown was appointed to Community Board 8 by Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer in 2015. She presently serves as co-chair of the Housing Committee. Lorraine is a member of the NYCHA Resident Advisory Board and serves on President Obama's criminal justice sentence reform. As a tenant advocate, activist, and volunteer, she has served as board member for various organizations, including the American Cancer Society and NAACP. She has also been active as a budget delegate for District 5 Participatory Budgeting Committee, helping facilitate and helping facilitate the budgeting process. Welcome, Lorraine. Thank you, I'm glad to be here. Thank you for joining us today. Certainly. I'm aware you've been heavily involved in the community. What drew you to joining the community board? To make a difference, to, make, to be part of the solution, and more importantly, to be the voice for the voiceless, and to make a strong contribution. I think that's always important, and uh, I'm only empathetic with what you're saying. In parallel to your work as co-chair of the Housing Committee, you've been very active on Section 3 compliance and how it relates to NYCHA development. For those who may not know, could you tell us what Section 3 means and why is it important? Certainly. Section 3 was implemented by George Romney, Mitt's father. Mm -hmm. During the um, Nixon administration, he was Secretary of HUD. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to make a difference in people's lives. He wanted them to have an opportunity to move in and move out, but to be self-sufficient. So with Section 3, it provides training. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, you can have your own business. And the housing authority sets aside X number of dollars so that you can grow your own business. And each resident in public housing has a million dollar cap. So there are a lot of millionaires that have left public housing mm -hmm. and who are self-sufficient. And it's, it's, it's an ROI, return on investment. And it's important that we take a group of people, arriving, newly arrived immigrants, mm -hmm. people who have not had opportunities, and teach them how to be part of the American dream. Absolutely. And also, too, I think it's critical that government staff learn about Section 3 and how it's implemented. How do you see your role on as a community board member tying into all of your advocacy work? Well, my, my focus right now is affordable housing, particularly in, in our community, Community Board 8. Mm -hmm because we have so many developers that are here in town and they're participating in the tax credits, the 421A, mm -hmm. and a lot of them are taking those tax credits and putting those apartments in the Bronx and other boroughs. We feel if they're going to build here, there should be opportunity for people to live here. I agree with you. What's been the biggest win for you on the community board? Well, I don't know if I'd use the term win, mm -hmm. the terminology win, but what's been most critical for me is housing, affordable housing, especially for seniors. Mm -hmm. There's a lack of affordable housing for seniors. Mm -hmm. And I support the mayor's plan. And um, I want to work closely with the mayor to implement it so that old people and young people have an opportunity to live and thrive in our district. Absolutely. And my last question, and one I favor because of the interesting answers I've received, if you could change any three things about how com community boards work, what would they be and why? Well, I feel a mentoring program. The senior community board members, when a new member comes in, they should be assigned to a, a senior member for at least a trimester so that they can learn the ropes, how to proceed, Robert's Rules of Order, et cetera, and the politics, of course. Mm -hmm. And the second thing I'd like to see, I'd like to see the community board 
had meetings in some of the public housing developments in this particular area okay. so that the people in housing can see how the community board functions and give them an opportunity. Gee whiz, I want to participate. I want to make our community better. And lastly, I think it's critical that we all have an understanding that we're all part of the community and to be inclusive. Mm -hmm. And there should be term limits. Yeah. We have people that have been on the community board for eight, nine, 10, 20 years. I'd like to see room made for younger people and older people and more people of color to participate. That, that, that's what I would like. Those are the three things. Thank you for asking. Oh, no, those are certainly some interesting ideas. And I'm um, sure there are, you know, many people in the community who share some of your, you know, some of your uh, preferences as well. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that I haven't, you know, asked that you would want to share um, with us today? Well, yes. This has been a wonderful opportunity for me. Mm -hmm. And my focus right now is affordable housing. And we're going to be convening uh, next, year, uh, next year in January, hopefully with all of the um, Manhattan Borough um, community boards to set up a bank, a clearing house, so that people can reach out to us regarding affordable housing. Mm -hmm. What are some of the loopholes how it can be addressed, what are the opportunities, and, um, and to make the developers more accountable, more enforcement, and more importantly, to offer more than 20%, at least 30 or 40%. Okay, thank you so much, Lorraine, for joining us. Thank and you for I, having me. I learned me. a lot from you. Thank you, I'm so glad to be here. Oh, absolutely. If you are interested in learning more about or serving on the community board, you can find more information on the CB8 website. If you're passionate about serving your community, I highly encourage you joining one of our next community board meetings, which are open to the public. Um, and these meetings are available on our website at www.cb8m.com.